Welcome back. Today we are going through lesson 3-2, which is about operations with functions. So taking functions and doing our four operations with them. So we're going to go through kind of the notation of it first, and then we'll do some examples. The first operation that we can do is addition. When we have addition, we can write it as f plus g of x, which is the same as saying take the function of x plus the other function of x. We can also do subtraction, so we can take f of x minus g of x. We can also do multiplication, so take the function of x times g of x. And then we can do function division. So with division, we write it as f of x over g of x. And one thing we want to remember here is that when we're dividing, we can't divide by zero. So that g of x cannot be zero. So that is a restriction we just need to keep in mind when we're doing division. So speaking of restrictions, when we um, do operations with two functions, the domain is going to be the x values that are in the domains of both functions that we're doing the operations with. So f and g. So when we say g of x can't be zero, that means we can't plug in an x value that would make it equal zero. So that is a domain restriction that we would have to include when doing division. So those are the basics of the four. Let's do some practice with them. So in these examples, we are going to have two functions. We're gonna have f of x here, and then our other function is going to be g of x here. So those are the two functions, whoops, all the way through minus two. And then those are the two functions for f and g, and then we have three x minus one for h. So that's what we're gonna be working with here. Let's jump into it. So for this first one, we're adding together g and h. So that means that I am going to take 5x squared plus 7x minus 2, and I'm going to add to it 3x minus 1. So when we're adding, we're really basically just combining like terms. So I have 5x squared. That's the only x squared. I have a 7x plus 3x, so that would give me 10x. And then I have a negative 2 minus 1, which would give me negative 3. All right, so for example, B, we're taking H of X, which is 3X minus 1, and we are subtracting from it. And when I'm subtracting, I put the second one in parentheses, and we'll talk about why in just a second. But I'm subtracting G here. So that helps me to remember that I'm subtracting each and every term in that second function. So I'm going to, again, combine like terms here. So that means that I really have a negative 5x squared on this one because I'm subtracting it from nothing. So 0 minus 5 is where I get that negative 5. Then I have 3x minus 7x. So we have to watch that minus there. 3 minus 7 is negative 4x. And then I have negative 1 minus negative 2. So that would be positive one for that function. All right, for C here, we are multiplying negative 4x plus 3 times 3x minus 1. So when I multiply those together, I would get negative 12x squared plus 9x, and then I would get plus 4x and minus 3. So combining those, I get negative 12x squared plus 13x minus 3. All right, then for D, we have f, which is negative 4x plus 3, divided by h, which is 3x minus 3. And in this case, we can't simplify that at all. We can't divide any of those. So that's our entire operation. All right, then we have f of x. So negative 
4x plus 3. And then we're subtracting 2 times the function g. So that's 5x squared plus 7x minus 2. So for this one, I'm going to maybe have to do a couple steps here. So I'm going to start by distributing that negative 2. So keeping the first function the same. Then I'd have negative 10x squared minus 14x and plus 4. And then I would combine like terms. So negative 10x squared, I've got negative 4x minus 14x, that's negative 18x. And then I've got 3 plus 4, which is 7. All right, and then lastly, I have 3 times f of x, so negative 4x plus 3. And I'm going to add to that g of x, so 5x squared plus 7x minus 2. Okay, so again, I'm going to go ahead and distribute first just to help me get a better idea of what I'm combining. And then just keep that second one the same. And then I'm going to combine like terms. So 5x squared, I've got negative 12x plus 7x. That's negative 5x. And then 9 minus 2 is 7. Okay, so let's jump in a little bit more to those domains. So thinking about our three functions, these three functions, the first one, f of x, here so we can see it, and the last one, h of x, are both linear. So that means we can plug in any value. And the middle one is quadratic, which also means we can plug in any value. So that means that the domain of all three of these functions is all real values, or negative infinity to positive infinity. So remember we talked about in the beginning that the domain, after we've done the operation, is the domain of the values in both of them. So that means the domains of all our new functions will be negative infinity to positive infinity because those values are in both of the functions no matter which two we added or combined with an operation. Except there's one where we're going to have a domain restriction. So thinking back to what we talked about up here, division is the one place we might have a domain restriction. So looking at our division, we have D there. So it says which function and why, and that would be D because when we're dividing, we can't have zero in the denominator. So for our purposes, that means that 3x minus 1 cannot equal 0. So this question is asking, what is the restriction? So what value of x would make that equal 0? So if I solve that, it would be 1 third. Okay, now we're going to talk about something called composition of functions. So a little different than operations, although we are combining two functions here. So when we have this one, we are going to take x, plug it into g, and then whatever we get from that, we're going to plug it into x. So you can see how the g is kind of the inner function. So we're going to take x, plug it in to g of x. Whatever we get as an answer there, we're going to plug in to f of x. And that is going to give us what we call f of g of x. Okay, so let's practice this a little bit here. So in this one, we have those same three functions, f, g, and h, and we are going to compose them. So this is what we were just talking about, f of g of x. So that means that I'm going to take g of x and plug it in to f of x. So I am going to write out negative 4x plus 3, but instead of the x, I'm replacing the x with the function g. So into here, I'm plugging in 5x squared plus 7x minus 2. Got a little squishy there. But I'm replacing it with the whole function g. I'm replacing the x with a function. And then we're going to simplify. So I'm going to distribute here. That's going to give me negative 20x squared minus 28x plus 8 
plus 3. And then combining like terms, I get negative 20x squared minus 28x plus 11. So we take one function and plug another into it. All right, so in this one, h, example h, we're taking h and plugging it into g. So everywhere there's an x in the g of x function, I'm going to replace it with 3x minus 1. So it would look like this. 5, replace the x with 3x minus 1, squared, because it was x squared, plus 7x, but I'm going to replace the x with 3x minus 1, and then minus 2. So now we simplify. Whoops. Got to square it. Let's try that again. So we have to square three x minus one. So that would give me nine x squared minus six x plus one. And then distributing here, I get twenty one x minus seven minus two. All right. So I'm going to have forty five x squared when I distribute that five. And then this would give me negative thirty x plus 21x, that's going to give me minus 9x. And then when I distribute 5 times 1, that's 5. Minus 7 is negative 2. Minus 2 is negative 4. Okay, so our next one is taking f of x and plugging it into itself. <clears throat> so in this one, I'm going to take negative 4x plus 3, and I'm going to replace the x with itself. So with negative 4x plus 3, kind of funky there. But you're plugging it into itself, so almost duplicating it. So distributing, we get 16x minus 12x. Or sorry, minus 12. No x on that one. And then minus, or plus 3 on the end. There we go. And then combining like terms, I get 16x minus 9. Okay, for this next one, you'll notice now we have three functions going on. So when we have this, I'm going to do just these last two first, and then whatever I get from that, I will plug in that. So first, I'm going to do h of f of x. So into h, I'm going to replace the x with f, which is negative 4x plus 3. So distributing, I get negative 12x, and then I'd get 9 minus 1, which is 8. So now I'm going to take that and plug that into f for x. So now I'm going to say, all right, f of x is negative 4x plus 3, but I'm replacing the x with negative 12x plus 8. Oh. So again, distributing, I would get 48x, and then I'd have negative 32 plus 3, which is negative 29. So it's just a multi-step problem now when you have three that you're combining. Okay. Last couple examples here. So for this one, you'll see that now we have this number here. When there's a number there, there's two methods that we're going to do. So let's start with method one. Method one is to do what we were doing, which is plugging in the function first and then substituting the two in. So here's what that would look like. In 2h of x, I'm going to replace the x with g. So let's see, h of x is 3x minus 1. And in there, I am replacing it with that quadratic of 5x squared plus 7x minus 2. All right, so we would get 15x squared plus 21x. And then when I distribute here, I get negative 6 minus 1 is negative 7. Then once I've simplified the function composition, now I plug the 2 in. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to replace it with a 2. So when I do that, again, use a calculator if you need or whatever you're allowed to use, but that's going to equal 95 as our final answer. So we compose the functions, then we plugged in the 2. Other way to do this is to plug in the number first. So into g of x, I am going to plug the 2. So I'm going to say 5 times 2 squared 
plus 7 times 2 minus 1. So that would be 20 plus uh, 14, which is 34, minus 1 is 33. Now I'm going to plug that 33 in to h of x. So then I'm going to have 3 times 33 minus 1. Oops, and I just realized, let's go back here, that this is actually a minus 2 in the original function. So let's fix that real quick. That's a minus 2, which would make my answer 32. There we go. So now we're going to do 2 times 32 minus 1. Sorry about that. So when we plug that in, we get 96 minus 1 which is still 95. So no matter which method you do, you get the same answer. It's just which one's easier for you to do. Plug in the function first or plug in the number first. So let's practice a little bit with that here for our final two example problems. So for this one, we've got f of h of negative 3. So I'm going to plug in the number first. So I'm going to do h of negative 3. So h of negative 3 would be 3 times negative 3 minus 1. When I get that, I get negative 10. Now I'm going to take that negative 10 and plug it in to f of x. So remember, f of x from up above is negative 4x plus 3. But instead of an x, we're plugging in negative 10. So that would be 40 plus 3, which is 40. Three. So notice that when we're plugging in a number, we get a number answer out. No x is involved. All right, and for our last example, we have g of f of 1. So I'm going to do f of 1 first. Remember, f is negative 4x. So I'm going to replace it with a 1 plus 3. That would be negative 4 plus 3, which is negative 1. And now I'm going to take that negative 1 and plug it into g. So g is 5x squared plus 7x minus 2. So when I do that, I get 5 minus 7 minus 2, which is negative 4. All right, so that is your function operations and your function composition. We'll see you next time.